is a special presentation of HBO Sports. Tonight, HBO Sports travels to Norfolk, Virginia, a considerably more tranquil setting than in the days when it was a key launching pad for Operation Desert Storm. But for Virginia's native son, undisputed lightweight champion of the world, Pernell Whitaker, the seas will be anything but calm as he climbs into the ring tonight. Not going to make it. This is a first round knockout for Pernell Whitaker. Winner by knockout and the undisputed Attention to the heavyweights. Undefeated Michael Moore continues his quest toward a title fight as he takes on British-born Jamaican-raised opponent Alex Stewart. Moore's boxing dossier demonstrates one of the sport's most prolific knockout punches. He's KO'd all 24 opponents he's faced. On the other hand, Alex Stewart looks to redeem himself after the devastating one-round loss to Mike Tyson. He hopes tonight to rediscover his own knockout punch. The emotions are flying high. We present a boxing doubleheader. Michael Moore takes on Alex Stewart, and then in our main bout, Bernal Whitaker puts his undisputed lightweight title on the line against Holy Diaz of Spain. at the Scope Arena in Norfolk, Virginia, where HBO Sports presents World Championship Boxing. First off, you're going to see up-and-coming heavyweight Michael Moore as he takes on Alex Stewart in about scheduled for 10 rounds. Then the main event, undisputed lightweight champion Pernell Whitaker fights the WBA's number one challenger, Poli Diaz. That fight scheduled for 12 rounds. This modern facility in Norfolk, just a short walk from the childhood home of Pernell Whitaker. The city still rallies around the fighter who brought back the gold medal from Los Angeles in 1984. We bring you inside to an electric atmosphere in Pernell Whitaker's hometown arena. And hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Lampley. What a night of fun we are about to bring you. The place is packed with friends and fans of Pernell Whitaker. Behind me, there's one small colony in the rafters of people who have come from Spain and elsewhere to root for Poli Diaz. They are sporting a Spanish flag and chanting his name. A marching band will bring Whitaker into the arena a little bit later in what may be a boxing first. And later in the evening, we look forward to interviews with world heavyweight champion in Evander Holyfield and an update on the potential Mike Tyson rape charge situation in Indianapolis. More for lovers and fighters alike, there's no place like home. And Norfolk's Pernell Whitaker will certainly attest to that. Once again, the undisputed lightweight champion of the world has taken his show off the main road into his backyard so close friends and family can catch his act up close and personal. Whitaker's life has become a crusade to serve as a good example. And when the opportunity has come his way, he's always given his hometown fans something to cheer about. a strong commitment to his roots. To many of Norfolk's youngsters, he is the embodiment of the better way. What can be achieved if you pursue a dream? For Whitaker, the dream was to become a champion and the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. Pernell may indeed have fulfilled that desire. Tonight, the undisputed world lightweight champion and Norfolk's favorite son, takes to the ring to put his title on the line against a tough opponent, Holy Diaz of Spain. Once 
again. We are live in Norfolk, Virginia. World Championship Boxing on HBO continues. It is time for the fight for the undisputed lightweight championship of the world between Pernell Whitaker, the champion, and Holy Diaz, the number one challenger. This bout scheduled for 12 rounds of championship action. And you think we've had excitement so far? You ain't seen nothing yet. In a few minutes, a 110-piece marching band is going to bring hometown favorite and world champion Pernell Whitaker into the ring. George Foreman, he's a young man who has been called by many magazines, experts, observers in boxing, the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. What do you think of it? If he can get by Diaz, all this stand-up European fighter type stuff, my foot. This guy is a good boxer. He can move left and right. He's a good puncher. He's got a fight on his hand. If he gets past this guy tonight, Hall of Fame. You saw some signs, however, in Whitaker's last fight against Anthony Jones, a relatively little-known opponent, that he might be slipping backward a little There's bit. There's no doubt in my mind he's not as quick as he was. Maybe he has more power, maybe not, but he's not as fast. His well, we're gonna see. just don't move. Well, we're going to see, because tonight he's in there against a guy who it appears to us can suck another relatively unknown opponent, never before seen in the United States, Larry Merchant. Who is Holy Diaz? Well, after watching all those heavy guns from those heavyweights, he's a guy with a couple of uh, pistols in his hands. And in fact, like Whitaker, he himself is a pistol in and out of the ring. It's been interesting watching him this week. He sort of charmed us and he's alarmed the Whitaker people a little bit because he hasn't taken a backward step at all in any of the pre-fight confrontations. He's aggravated Whitaker in, in particular, and as well as he might. He had 62 amateur fights, won them all. He's had 32 professional fights, won them all. Why shouldn't he believe he's gonna make it 95 and 0 <laughs> as, as a fighter? So he's here, he thinks he can win. The question that comes up is, can he fire those pistols fast enough and accurately enough to hit the most elusive target in boxing. All right, you've got a huge contingent of, well, I say huge, it feels <laughs> huge here, about 100 people up in the rafters chanting, poly, poly, poly. The Norfolk State Marching Band is getting ready. Let's ready for the next step in the life of Pernell Whitaker, public figure. The Norfolk, Virginia Beach area boasts the largest naval base in the Western world. This is also the biggest metropolitan region in the United States without a major league professional franchise. Unless you consider for a moment, boxing's undisputed lightweight champ, Pernell Sweet Pea Whitaker. Riding the crest of a genuinely cultivated hometown hero image, Whitaker has established a remarkable following in a transient society that supports roughly 70 home games a year for baseball's Tidewater Tides, the New York Mets AAA affiliate, and in which the Hampton Roads Admirals play 30 home games and this year won the Eastern Continental Hockey League title. Like most towns, Norfolk likes winners, as evidenced when 6,000-plus fans braved the elements in an unprecedented snowstorm two years ago. To watch Whitaker overwhelm Greg Haugen for the IBF lightweight title. It's harder for him just in general to, to, get, a, to get constant name recognition or at least uh, publicity. Uh, just because of the few times that he fights. Some of that also goes back to the fact that he keeps his nose fairly clean and, and stays out of trouble. And so when he's not fighting, he's not in the news either, uh, unlike some other boxers. Hey, how you doing? All right, good. Good luck. All right, thanks a lot. He hasn't just locked himself in some mansion out on the water. He is the guy that is always there when the local charities need him. He's the guy that's always there when the elementary school calls up and says, we want you to come out and talk about drug abuse, about staying in school. People are just tugging at him right and left, not to mention all the preparation he has now being in the prime of his boxing career. And do you know what? I have never heard the guy say no. It's critical that we have a young man like this, especially a kid that came out of tough environment, tough situation. And uh, while he became successful, he kept the common touch, uh, he kept his grassroots. Sweet Pea is our franchise. He is such a, uh, a good ambassador in the sense that he brags and boasts and says awfully good things about his hometown and his home area everywhere he goes. And so he's, he's a tremendous value to us. With the value his townspeople place on him, Whitaker understands the responsibilities of a world-class athlete totally committed to his craft. 
But more impressively, he refuses to exercise an option most other boxing mercenaries couldn't resist. Let's face it, everybody knows he can make a lot more money fighting in Atlantic City, or fighting in Las Vegas, or fighting in Madison Square Gardens. But Pete feels that it's important to him to give this community a chance to see a championship fight. Everyone can't afford a $250 ticket or $100 ticket. So $20, $30, and $40, they can afford that, and everybody will fill the scope up. So that's, that's sort of like giving back, and they, they respect that, and they look forward to that. Because once they hear that, oh, sweet, oh, Pernell, he cut the prices for us so we can have the opportunity to come. That's so, that's giving back, and that's what I've done. Giving back is the way it's done here. Recently, people honored the returning Desert Storm naval troops who served in the Persian Gulf. The locals are proud of their heroes, most particularly Navy pilot and former Iraqi prisoner of war, Lieutenant Jeffrey Zahn. But with most of the military home now, it's time for Purnell Sweet P. Whitaker's latest homecoming. It's been a while. He's ready. And by the way, who says you can't go home again? I'm looking forward to because it's always exciting. I haven't been back in two years, so I know these, that, you know, two years, I've, I've grown in two years, and I've matured in, in the last two years. So when they get a chance to come out and see a Pernell Whitaker show, I like, to, I like the show to be special. Coming up, live on HBO Sports, the World Lightweight Championship bout between Pernell Whitaker and Oli Diaz. 12 rounds of boxing action from the scope in Norfolk, Virginia, Pernell Whitaker's hometown. A little bit earlier this evening, Oli Diaz complained to scope officials when he came here and discovered that he was sharing his dressing quarters with some of the fighters on the undercard. While they prepared a personal dressing room for him, he came into the arena and introduced himself early to thousands of fans who are waiting to see him. Here he comes now, the number one ranked WBA lightweight contender, and he is as effusive and outgoing a personality as can be found anywhere in the sport, Larry. Okay! And he backs it up by being the best he can be. Very well-conditioned athlete. Bought a home in the mountains outside of Madrid. Runs a mile up the mountain to finish off his training every day. He says he's been training for this fight for four years. And to help make him feel at home here in Whitaker's home, there is a contingent upstairs in the rafters. I'm going to look at them and guess somewhere between 100 and 200 fans waving a Spanish flag, jumping up and down, even now amid the din, chanting, holy, 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 and look at their star, a wild man. When he won the Spanish championship, he won it in the other guy's hometown. When he won the European championship, he won it in Italy. So coming into the other guy's place doesn't seem to intimidate him. Oli Diaz, 32-0 with 21 knockouts. He claims that he was 62-0 as an amateur. We can't substantiate that. And if you take him at his word, he has never lost a fight. Did somebody just score a touchdown? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Larry, we did. that they are playing is Behold the Green and Gold. 110 members recruited from among alumni and active band members because school is not in session at this time. Here they come. This 
time Pernell Whitaker made sure that his fight wouldn't be an anti-climax as it was as it was after the Camacho Haugen fight. Because he's got a hell of an act to follow. Indeed he does. And while the band is doing this, Holy Diaz is walking around the ring with a Spanish flag trailing him, blowing kisses to the audience. Somehow this reminds me of Zaire. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. I tell you, George, when he, drums, go, when he goes drums. back home, all those people in Spain are going to say, wow, they really make an event out of boxing in America. <laughs> <laughs> George Foreman making reference to autumn 1974 in Zaire, the worst night of your life. When you watch Diaz, you sit up there and wonder, man, what are they trying to do to me? Feel the drums, feel the marching. Am I at home or not? It starts the chant, Ali Boumaye, you're in trouble. That's again. when Diaz may jump out of, jump out of the ring. His only loss was to Jose Luis Ramirez of Mexico in Paris, France in 1988. He avenged that loss one year later here in Narpa. Otherwise, 24 victories, 13 KOs. And so we take you to the tail of the tape and you will see that Whitaker weighed in right at the limit. Diaz was a little light. Surprising because Holy Diaz, Larry Merchant, is as deep-chested and muscular a lightweight as we've ever seen. Yeah, he looks like a welterweight from the chest up. Bunched at numbers, Larry. It's hard to know what to make of these numbers. Whitaker is the more active fighter, but basically we don't know the opposition that Diaz has faced, what caliber it was, what any of this means. He does throw a lot of hard punches as the jab totals will show. There they are, you see that Diaz doesn't use the jab very much at all. For Whitaker, it is a principal weapon. Harold Letterman with the rules. Well, Holy Diaz and Pernell Whitaker are gonna fight under the rules of the World Boxing Association. Three judges will score the fight on a 10-point must system. No standing eight count, three knockdowns, and any one round will, will end the fight. And you can be saved by the bell in the last round only. And the only ones that can stop the fight are the referee and Commissioner uh -huh. Doug Beavers, but not the doctor. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer.
Ladies and gentlemen, main event monitor in association with the undisputed King of Beer, Budweiser, presents the featured bout of the evening. This bout is approved by the Virginia State Athletic Commission, Boxing Commissioner Doug Beavers. It is sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation, President Robert W. Lee, represented at ringside by Bill Brennan, the World Boxing Council, President Jose Suleiman, represented by Hector Garcia. The rules and regulations of the World Boxing Association will be in effect. President Gilberto Mendoza, Supervisor Ringside, Jorge Klee. All the officials from the state of Virginia will remain the same. The judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system will be Sheila Harmon Martin from the United States, Julio Roldan from Venezuela, and Viva Exton, also from the United States. The man in charge of the action in the ring at this time is referee Al Rothenberg from the state of Virginia. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Norfolk, Virginia's famous Scope Arena, Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the red trunks with white trim, and weighing in at 133 and three quarter pounds. His professional record, an unbelievable 32 and 0 with 21 KOs. Damas y caballeros de Palomeras, España, el número uno rival del mundo, Holy Pia. And across the ring in the blue corner, <laughs> wearing the blue trunks with white trim, weighing an even 135 pounds. This 1984 Olympic gold medal champion has a professional record of 25 victories, only one defeat, 13 KO from Norfolk, Virginia. Ladies and gentlemen, the undisputed, lightweight champion of the world, Pernell Sweet Pea. Whitaker! The question, as in any fight with Pernell Whitaker, is can the other guy land enough punches to change the tide of the punch of the fight? Pernell Whitaker is a master at neutralizing and frustrating opponents. Indeed, Pernell sounded like a basketball coach yesterday when he said, my offense comes off of my defense. If my defense is working, I'm going to land punches. The first punches have been thrown. The tension is gone. What an atmosphere, though. Boy, I'm even nervous. Diaz will try to work from side to side to set up counter punches. Whitaker likes to come straight up the middle. Holy Diaz lands a left over the top. Whitaker trying to establish the jab early. Whitaker doesn't understand that this guy is quicker than he is. Whole round could go by and he would not have landed one shot if he's not jumping. Well, it's impossible for Purnell to imagine that he's fighting somebody quicker than himself. So he's he doesn't believe he's ever been in that situation before. He's thinking he's a big puncher following this guy and losing the round. And what a contrast between the technicianship of Whitaker and the wild swinging of Poli Diaz. And when Whitaker catches him, he's not going to hit him with a dynamically hard punch. So why is he following him looking for one good shot? 
Diaz gets in the right hand twice. A good body punch. A good left to the body by Whitaker. Whitaker trying to stick the jab into Diaz's face. And Diaz counters and comes back with wide left and right. And a couple of them landed again. And the judges is love it. That hurts. Whitaker says that he hurt his left hand against Anthony Jones late in that fight. Didn't seem to use it much in the closing round. He has already landed a good punch to Diaz, and it hurt. Straight right hand. Left hand, I'm sorry. Left hand inside to the body. By Burnell Whitaker. Diaz dancing side to side, trying to set up one of those wide swinging right hands. And Diaz briefly becomes the aggressor as the round comes to a close. Diaz wants to make a brawl out of it. And I thought he won that round. He threw Whitaker off his game. Wait, wait till he throws. Wait till he throws. You work inside. Go inside. Go at it. Throw your right hand. Throw your right hand. Wait till he gets in. When he gets in, he throws combinations. interpreter in Poli Diaz's corner is Ruben Castillo. Neither fighter very accurate in round one. It was a feeling out round. And now the crowd has settled into its seats. Diaz came in lighter, so he'll be able to move a lot longer than Whitaker. is unorthodox stuff to say the least it's not something you spar against or train against a good right jab by Whitaker but it's only one jab to 100 shots to, by Diaz Whitaker missed a lot with the jab in round one couldn't get close enough to Diaz and that was a trip and you're going to see the two fighters get their feet caught with one another a lot and Al Rothenberg elects to give Diaz a standing eight count. It was a knockdown. You think it was a knockdown? It was a knockdown. I think their feet were tied up, George. That too. All right, call it a knockdown officially. Whoa. And now Diaz almost gets one. It's Whitaker. He almost got a knockdown. Yeah, Whitaker had to rely on the ropes to hold him up. Good body punch. Good right hand to the body by Diaz. That hurts. Whitaker's trying to pay him back now. He's and another to... solid right to the body by Diaz, who lunges forward and makes it look awkward, but is effective in doing it. Now Whitaker lands a left hand to swat Diaz away as he tries to lunge in again. Great champion. Oh. Now Whitaker's moving his legs. Whitaker trademark coming around from behind his opponent. Diaz didn't like him and whacked him with the left hand. Solid right and a left from Poli Diaz. Diaz is throwing roundhouses. He's yeah. throwing roundhouses, but they're too quick to get out of the way out. And again, Whitaker almost goes down and uses the ropes to stay up. This is bizarre stuff, George. You would never school a fighter to do this. No. This is not the time to leave your television and go and get a sandwich.
He has to start to slow down, which is what he does best. When he slows down, he'll counter punch it. Oh, left hand from Whitaker. That hurt. Hold it, hold it, hold it. This is a guy with a scalpel fighting a guy with a hammer. The guy with the scalpel is looking for a hammer, someplace to make it a, an even fight. You can't throw so many punches. You've got to wait for him. Throw the right hand. When you get in, when you get when you get in, throw throw your punches to the body. You're too far away from him, Polly. Let's see if that was a real knockdown. That's the punch. That's the punch. I don't think it was a knockdown, George. I think it was a slip. A right-hander against a left-hander. Their, their knees crossed. I don't think the punch did the damage. I agree. George, you still want to call it a knockdown? <laughs> Well, it's that's okay. One, you, you got can, the ref on your side. You George. can stick by it if you want to. Come on. <laughs> Round three begins. Whitaker ineffective so far with the jab. Only 14 of 58. Let go. Hold it. Let go. Let go. Let go. Hold it. Stop. Break. Whitaker's, Whitaker's looking for a knockout on a guy that he's not going to kick with a hard shot just one at a time. Why he's doing it, I can't understand. Because he's frustrated already, right? This guy knows, Diaz knows how to move. He's got 30 fights. Whitaker landed a left. Diaz came back with a right of his own. And another. Holy Diaz swinging wildly, but landing to the body and to the head. Those roundhouses are landing on the top of the head. Anything could happen anytime. It's interesting, George, that the guy with the round punches is beating the guy with the straight punches to the hold punch. It, because the round punches are coming quicker. Well, it's almost unbelievable. I mean, if you told the boxing purist what you were seeing and he couldn't see it himself, he would say, no, you can't be seeing it correctly. Whitaker trying to land one hard shot as though he's a big heavyweight. Well, and in doing so, is he abandoning what he does best, George? That's right. He can easily get cut now because he's landing one shot at a time. Look at Whitaker trying to load up the left it, hand. It ain't gonna happen like that. Totally uncharacteristic, and Diaz takes advantage by stepping forward and pounding to the body. Bernal Whitaker has forgotten who he is in there. I think we have to remember this, though, Jim and George. Diaz is making him do things he doesn't want to do, and maybe that he can't do. Give Diaz the credit for making him do this hurt. kind of Whitaker stuff. Whitaker was hurt that time, actually hurt. I got it, break, break. If Diaz Conner can calm him down and pace him, he can win this thing tonight. The title's going to change hands. Break, break. Well, it would be one of the biggest upsets in recent years in boxing. Oh, a solid uppercut by Whitaker, and that stopped Diaz for a second. And Brunel steps forward and lands a right. Only one punch at a time, Whitaker. Brunel holding Diaz and pounding low blows and getting away with it. Two in a row below the belt. Al Rothenberg says, don't hold him and hit him, and Whitaker gets away with another low blow. Diaz hasn't complained yet. Right hand from Whitaker landed flush on the jaw of Holy Diaz as they traded punches at the end of the round. Two, three jabs, right? Okay. 
Hey, that body function, every time you hit him in the body, he can't do nothing, right? Bang that break. Bang those ribs. Don't pull out. Second down. The secret to what Diaz is doing, George, is he doesn't throw just one punch. That's Whitaker is waiting for him to stop, but he don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> Diaz used the stool for the first time. Well, whether through his own inefficiency or because of the awkwardness of Diaz, Whitaker's main weapon is gone. He landed only two of 20 jabs in round number three. For the moment, it appears he's going to have to find another way to break down Poli Diaz's defense. George Benton, his trainer, advised him to duck under those wild swings and throw punches to the body. Let's see if he can do it. Whitaker, as was the case in his last fight against Anthony Baby Jones, George, looks a little flat-footed, not using the great speed and footwork that typified his earlier career. No longer has footwork, it's gone. I got it, hold it, stop, stop. All of this talk about the best fighter pound for pound, sometimes it goes to our head, leads us to stop developing our talent. Whitaker landed the left, but it wasn't a heavy blow. Diaz doing at least as much damage with his body punches as Whitaker does when he gets one over the top. Where would the footwork have gone, George? Oh, it's gone to his head. People are complimenting him a bit too much. It's like an artist. Sometimes nobody really appreciates it. I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm starting to produce bad art. <laughs> Here's another thing, George. Whitaker is in, an, is in a rare position for himself. He is the aggressor because this guy's awkward style. He's not used to fighting in this kind of style. Well, you can create and make this guy come to you. You hit him three times, and you run backwards. As fighters will often do, Pernell Whitaker told us yesterday that he never felt better, never been stronger, never been quicker, and more prepared. It does not always look that way tonight. He's been beat by a lesser fighter only because he's doing something he shouldn't do. Look for one knockout shot. Whitaker trading punches with Coley Diaz and taking two heavy shots to the body. For the first time, Diaz has started to hold, so the body punches are starting, are starting to wear him down. Tell it hurt because Diaz is smiling. Keep him up, dude. Keep him up. Referee asks Whitaker to keep him up. Oh. Harold Letterman, show us your scorecard after four rounds. Well, Jim, I've got it a surprisingly close 38 to 37, two rounds apiece. But uh, one point in favor of Pernell Whitaker uh, based on a knockdown of round number two. Uh, Jim, we have four officials in this fight, interestingly enough. Uh, three judges were appointed by the, uh, by the IBF, the WBA, and the WBC. Virginia appointed the referee. And surprisingly enough, three out of the four do come from Virginia. So I, I don't know what it's going to be, but that's the story. I didn't give Whitaker an extra point for that knockdown. Because he didn't do anything the rest of the round in particular. Yeah, it was a flash knockdown at best. At worst, I have it two rounds apiece. Stay there, Pete. Stay there, Pete. Stay there, Pete. Stay there. And punch stat numbers would substantiate both of you on the closeness of the fight. Both fighters have thrown 195 punches through the first four rounds. They have landed 66 for Diaz, 65 for Whitaker. Could hardly be closer. Diaz is starting to coast a little bit. He's resting up for the long haul. Holy Diaz's cornerman asked him between rounds to stay on his toes and keep moving, not to stand still and allow Whitaker to hit him with the left like that. Rennell is down for a moment. Well, Al Rothenberg didn't get a call that one a knockdown. Rennell went 
to the canvas by himself. I like what Diaz did there. Whitaker did one of his acts where he bent all the way down. Diaz just popped him right on the top of the head. That's when you think the sky is falling. <laughs> has purposely gone out of his way to fight Southpaws to get rid of the real knockdown. Whitaker a real knockdown. Al Rothenberg is going to call it. Now he what is the counter knockdown? Now I want to argue about that one. Well, it looked that way to us. Almost another real knockdown. Yeah, because Bully Diaz stepped inside of Whitaker's left and pounded a right hand to Whitaker's face. A good fight punch. Whitaker's going for a knockout. And Diaz, playing a little possum, comes back with the right hand. And now they're trading blows to the face. He's hurt. Probably. I think he's right. Hurt. Probably the right side of his ribs are broken. We've got a full-scale brawl, but you're right. Holy Diaz is in a lot of pain. He's got a broken rib. He's got a broken rib. Whitaker loses his balance for the moment. Well, he's either got a broken rib or he took a whale of a low blow. But the way he's holding his right arm leads you to believe that maybe he has sustained a broken rib. I can tell you one thing. Me, I'm it's not a doctor, right. but I want to go to the medicine, medicine school, the school of medicine right now. Watch well, your you're pretty good here. on this stuff. Watch your head. A right and a left for Whitaker landed flush. He has somehow kept the mouthpiece in. You can see that Diaz is in trouble, although he comes forward with the right hand again. Hey, step back, step back, step back, step back. Yeah, I would prescribe. Watch your rib right now. <laughs> wow! Wow! <laughs> what a night! It looks like the six shooters can hit just as hard as those heavy guns. Okay, you have recuperated. Nothing's gonna happen. Keep your hands up. He's looking for your ribs. Jab, jab. You gotta keep throwing. You must clean it up. You gotta set. You gotta set. Here is Cornell Whitaker showing that he can get into a street fight and do damage. And he's doing the damage where his trainer, George Benton, wanted him to do it to the body. But if he doesn't get a knockout, believe me, he's going to lose this fight. Crowd now chanting, sweet pea, sweet pea, sweet pea. And Purnell has gone to the power game. Landed 27 of 38 power punches in round number five. Many of them to the body. But if Diaz has a broken rib, it hasn't affected his winking. He was winking at people at ringside between rounds. Believe me, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I would prescribe. Hold on. a puncher after all. When Burnell goes to the body, Poli stops punching. Just can no longer take it. Diaz waves hello to the crowd and then steps in to pound Whitaker on the top of the head with the left hand. The Whitaker allowed him to get a second win. You can believe Diaz has put on a better show than people would have thought he would. A champion. Well, I got to tell you, after we left poolside yesterday, there were plenty of people in our group who thought he might have a chance to win the fight, just based on the confidence he showed in that conversation. And you've seen that cockiness in the ring tonight. 
What a shot by Diaz. A right to the body and a right to the head. Would have almost went down. I don't think I've ever seen Purnell take this many hard punches in a fight. I got it. I got it. Hold it. Hold it. Stop. Stop. And it's only because he wants to be the puncher tonight. He's not moving his head left and right. He's just coming in, head straight up. Well, he wasn't landing the dab at all. So he had to go to some other plan. The left hand drives Diaz back into the ropes. Whitaker looks very calm now. Much more collected than he did two rounds ago. He hits him with a good right hand and then he lets him get away. like one of those baseball pitchers he winds up well it's entirely a counter shot he waits for you to commit on the left side and he brings it at you correct his first instinct when he gets hit is to hit the other guy back that's what champions are made of pretty pretty well, the punches you go, you got to throw them with all your might. This guy is Omri Cooper. Great deep, real deep. He won't fight on that side. He's just trying to hold you. You know, it's just bullshit. Man. Yeah. Okay. Just hold those hands up and keep them in front of him, but watch him, okay? But his hands got to be up, okay? Stay there, Pete. Go on back. Go on back. Go on back. Whitaker threw 71 punches in the last round. Let's see if he can be as busy again in stanza number seven. Diaz only get hits when he gets lazy and he stops to wonder what's going on. Another left hand over the top. More and more Whitaker is able to initiate the action. And less and less does Diaz answer back. Never seen it quite like that. This is a whole new Purnell. Break, step back, that's it. He just lost his footwork, but believe me, he's got a power to take care of himself. Well, but can he finish, George? No, 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 no. He's looking for one shot knockout. He seldom help him in that weight class. That hurt. A puncher like Chavez has finished opponents at this stage in fight down here in this weight class, but not Purnell. Whitaker was hurt with a straight right hand. Yeah, but Diaz looks to me to have run out of gas a little bit. That's no doubt. The body punching, taking a toll. Cameraman. 
Those are still photographers that Al Rothenberg is urging to move back. Whitaker chasing Diaz into the corner. And Rothenberg calls it a knockdown. Second knockdown of the fight for Brunel Whitaker. That was a knockdown. And that was a knockdown produced by Whitaker's increasing dominance as he simply swarmed the opponent to the floor. You gotta go up. You gotta, you gotta go up throwing punches. You gotta go up throwing punches. Let's take a look and see if that knockdown in the corner, the right hand, it was a knockdown. not a sweet pea that's been seen here before in Norfolk or almost anywhere else. Well, if he can finish, they're going to love him. You know, as we've said before, when a, when a boxer starts to slow down a little bit, that's when he has his most interesting and dramatic fights. He's going to pull a rabbit out of the hat tonight. You know, George, he's never had a knockout past the sixth round in his whole career. It's a hard thing for most fighters to do. He is running a little bit now. Rennell content to stalk and measure. That was the time to run. This is the time to run. Well, Paulie Diaz's quickness is gone, though, George. You saw him fall those two punches. No longer are they lightning deliveries as they were in the first three rounds. He's tasted the power of Colonel Whitaker now. He doesn't want any more of that. Surprising power. You saw the left hand solid on the chin. Diaz begins to run again. running and not boxing and a referee can penalize a fighter for doing this. This is quite a compliment to Pernell Whitaker. <laughs> what Diaz is saying with that is that for the moment he wants no part of Sweet Pea and there's the reason why. Like my mama used to tell me, son, it's better they say there he went than there he lay. Well, he got in a right-hand shot there. A good counter. And Brunel gets a shot. Grabs Diaz against the ropes and pounds him twice to the body. Al Rothenberg says, don't hit and hold. Brunel comes back to the body, and Diaz may not have much left. That's a lot of leather. Those body punches are really killing this guy. The cocky expression is gone from the face of Foley Diaz. He looks worried and troubled. Maybe he's been in this predicament before, though. Watch it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Get down on your knee. Knock it. Knock it. Knock it. Knock it. Knock it. Knock The old on your one knee trick. by Whitaker as he comes straight up the middle against the wide winging shots of Diaz and landed a left and a right. And now some of the old footwork begins to come back as he cuts off the ring. Harold Letterman, your scorecard through eight rounds. Well, Jim. As we can see, I've got it. Ten rounds, uh, six rounds to two, 78 to 72, a commanding six-point lead for Pernell Whitaker. That's the truth, guys. I haven't, I haven't seen uh, Poli Diaz do much since the third round. It's been all Pernell. He's landing between the hardest shots. He's virtually chasing Poli Diaz out of the ring. 
The only thing I can't understand is when Holy D is circled to his right, I can't see why Perno doesn't nail him with a left hand. Because Perno's a southpaw. You put him in overdrive, he got this little shit. I got to stop. Right? My guy's got nothing left. Second up. Second up. Oh, we got to go. With all fighters, a uh, Lou Duva and George Benton, there really is a wonderful uh, sense of synchronization and cooperation between them on exactly what the next move is to maintain the fighter's poise and give him something to do. Diaz no longer respects the power of Pernell Whitaker now. Yeah, he's just taking it. But I believe he can win this fight. He's the You still out. believe Diaz can win uh, the fight? I think so. He's How? He's going to throw a catch this guy sleeping, walk, walking in, sleepwalking, and tag him with a straight right well, hand. Well, he's landed some solid rights, and Purnell is still there staring him in the face. That was a good right. All right, we'll see. It's going to be by surprise when he catches him sleepwalking. <laughs> right hand inside landed by the edge. And it was hurt enough to stop him in his track, yeah. He's going to catch him sleepwalking there. He, he's got to remember a good footwork by Whitaker. So you're saying Whitaker looks a little too confident for your taste right That's now? That's right. He's fighting a real champion. This guy's a European uh, uh, lightweight champion. And again, Diaz lands the counter right. Three most significant blows he's landed in the last three rounds. Great left hand by Whitaker. Got through the defense. Diaz in the films I saw him earlier, he likes to stand there and wait for you to make mistakes. Whitaker going back to the flat-footed motion of the early rounds for a moment. Whitaker could be playing with a cobra. But the right side of Diaz is so, so such bad damage. Uh, I don't understand. Crowd chanting, sweet P, sweet P. And now upstairs they come back with Foley, Foley. And he lands a looping left. There's not much snap behind him. Believe me, it's like playing with a snake and walk right into a good right hand, Whitaker. to say that one was a slip. Almost turned into a Hulk Hogan showdown. So maybe that evens things up for the early knockdown, which we thought was clearly a slip. Respira. Respira, tranquilo. There's no problems, Polly. Don't throw, don't throw so many questions. You've got to look for those shots. You've got to look for him. He's taking a lot of shots when he comes in. Let's see it. Hit or trip? Trip. He really thought Pernell tripped him. That's why he wanted to pull his leg. Yeah, I think he tripped himself, actually, by running over Brunel's stationary leg. Good call. Very much like the first knockdown. Remember, the first time around, Rothenberg called it a knockdown. There has been one solid, distinctive, and indisputable knockdown in the fight. One other, perhaps, slip called a knockdown, and now the slip is called a slip. Any way you slice it, Diaz has been on the canvas three times. Whitaker doesn't know what he's playing with. Round 10 of a scheduled 12. Diaz 
Diaz is used to this. He's been 10 rounds twice and 12 rounds three times in his career. Solid, accurate punching from Brunel Whitaker now, who taunts Diaz with his arms at his side. Like I said, he doesn't know what he's playing with. This guy is a good puncher in this last couple of rounds. has never knocked anybody out beyond the 10th round. Bernal Whitaker has never scored a knockout beyond the 6th round. So more and more, it looks as though this will go to the judges. the right hand. That left now, the right side of what's that? Go ahead. The right side of Diaz is hurt so bad he's afraid to commit himself with that right hand. He's being reluctant because he doesn't want to get himself hurt. There he swings the right and Brunel digs to the body underneath it. Right hand misses by Diaz. Whitaker lands the left again. Crowd responds enthusiastically. Coming to a close. Yes, it's trying to charm him. Diaz has gone back to holding the right hand very close to his rib cage. Once that punch was landed low, he hasn't, he hasn't overcome yet. face of a highly motivated, well-conditioned, tough guy, awkward guy, until he could seize the control of the fight. In the last round, he was it was looking like he was going to start to play now that he had uh, uh, captured the, the uh, momentum of the fight. Georgie Benton right made him settle down in the corner, said, be a professional, none of that wise guy stuff. Just go out there and win the fight. George Benton, trainer of the year in the eyes of the United States boxing boxing writers. And you saw the punch stat numbers that showed that the jab, which utterly deserted Purnell in the early parts of the bout, is now back with a vengeance. He landed 37 jabs in that last round. Get up, boy. Whitaker's developed into a great puncher. No longer master footwork. Well, he doesn't look powerful at all, George. I got it, hold it, hold it. Hold Holy it, Diaz it. digging it. desperately at Whitaker as he tries to muscle him around the ring. He's done a fine job. Hadn't been put up for real. <laughs> now Whitaker motions Diaz to the center of the ring, says, come with me. Holy tries to chase him down, and now Diaz is grinning momentarily. And Brunel begins to jab the grin away. He's hurt, Brunel. What if he was hurt? A oh, straight right hand. I don't think kind Holy knows it. I don't think Diaz knows it. Oh, it's kind of straight. Let me put it like that. <laughs> it's interesting. Whitaker looked into the corner with a kind of bashful look on his face as if to say to Georgie Bain, you were right, I shouldn't fool around, I should take care of business. 
because while he was fooling you. around, he got nailed. Watch your head. Watch your head. This fight goes to the judges. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah, but they're not for Virginia judges, George. Then you know what's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course you know what's going to happen. Well, even the judges can't get this one wrong. A good fighter takes it out of the hands of the judges, and Whitaker has done that here. I think it's a tremendously impressive performance for Whitaker by virtue of exactly what you said, Larry. He was in trouble tactically early, and he found a way to turn that around. But Diaz and Mapo won six of those first rounds. Hey, anything can happen. I got it. I got it. But my book is not a very good book. You <laughs> Your book is still learning, George. Back. 
boxing match is a war. No, Diaz is trying to turn it into a bullfight. That's right. I got it. I got it. Stop your head. Stop your head. Come on. Rennell's going to make it. That's it. That's, that's it. That's it. I was about to say, Corey Diaz didn't leave anything back in Spain. He left it all here in this ring. And I give him the highest marks for doing the best he could against a really, really good fighter. I agree. And despite whatever you may want to say about lost speed or lost footwork in the end, it was another tribute to the technicianship, the skill, and the ring management capability of Burnell Whitaker. He turned he the fight around. He better be careful. He may get hit. He has a candy bar now. Harold Letterman, your scorecard for the fight. Jim, 117, 109, nine rounds to three, Burnell Whitaker. Burnell Whitaker won easy. I mean, absolutely no question about it. I, I think that uh, there's no way he can lose this fight. You know, uh, in the very last round, Holy uh, Diaz tried to butt him to try to get even, but it's all Perno Whitaker. As you said, he just uh, outbanged him. Too much of a ring general. George, you think Whitaker's going to get the decision? I'm afraid if it had been judges elsewhere, Diaz could win this boxing match. All right, let's take a look at the butt. And we mentioned that Diaz was told by his cornerman to do anything and everything he could. And he took advantage of an opportunity to pop Pernell, and that hurts, George. That really hurts. An unfortunate for Diaz, not good sportsmanship. And we're waiting to see if Michael Buffer is ready with the official decision. I don't believe that's the case. So right now, while officials here scurry to try to gather scorecards and bring together the result of the fight, you see Poli Diaz okay, still playing you, to the crowd. You and getting mixed cheers and boos. Probably he won the support of a few here tonight with his wild, unorthodox, and unusual attack. And Pernell Whitaker, who no doubt had some nervous moments and gave his corner some nervous moments, particularly in the early rounds, squints and tries to get the buzzing pain above his left eye to go away. As he waits to hear, and now for the first time, the two fighters show a moment of mutual respect. They met in Spain last year when Whitaker fought there in Madrid, and they didn't like each other then. Whitaker threw 582 punches according to HBO Punch Stat statistics in the bout, landed 304. His accuracy increased consistently from round one through round 12. And you saw the numbers for Poli Diaz. There is a Virginia Commonwealth boxing official in the middle of the ring with a cellular phone. I don't know if the judges have left the arena or not. Bring him over here. Over here. Harold, do you care to hazard a guess as to why this is taking so long? WBA doesn't speak very good English, and he may be having difficulty interpreting the scores with Doug Beavis, the Virginia commissioner. The supervisor from the WBA. Yes. He'll be the one collecting the scorecards. You see referee Al Rothenberg waiting. And now I think Michael Buffer's ready with the official decision in the fight. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Sheila Hammond Martin scores about 120 to 107. Viva Exton scores about 119 to 107. And Julio Roldan scores at 119 to 108. For the winner by unanimous decision and still undisputed, lightweight champion of the world, Pernell Weekly Whitaker. So Pernell Whitaker, who according to our figuring landed 65 to 70 percent of his punches in the late rounds, comes up with a unanimous decision and by the numbers on those scorecards, a near whitewash over Poli Diaz. And we go to Larry Merchant with Sweet Pea. Okay, Pernell Whitaker, that was not a Pernell Whitaker kind of fight. He turned that into an alley fight and forced you to fight his fight, at least for the first half of it. Well, well Larry, that's the game. That's, that's why we, I have a great staff. 
great organization. We went in there, we just wanted to punish him. We didn't, I didn't want to knock him out, knock him down or anything. I did exactly what I wanted to do. I punished him. He came in my town, he disrespected everybody, and we punished him for 12 rounds. You've talked about moving up to the 140 pound class. What are your plans? My plans right now are to go on vacation with my boys. In the, the ring, in, in the, the ring. ring. <laughs> well, in the ring, it's no, no plans at all. I guess we're looking towards Piaz or whatever. But uh, in the future, the near future, I will be moving up to a much stronger, I'll be much stronger. But I'm, I'm very strong and physical right now. And you, say, you can tell it in the ring. I just didn't want to get careless. He's a swinger, he's a professional, and he's the number one contender. I'm very pleased. I couldn't have done any better. Thank you very much. Let's go back to ringside with Jim and George. All right, Larry, thanks very much. Purnell Whitaker, unanimous decision winner. And George, we heard Purnell there talking about his future. One more likely fight at 135 pounds against Jorge Paez sometime in the fall. And then Purnell, for his part, is expecting to move on up to 140 pounds. Now, he pounded away at this guy for the last six or seven rounds of the bout and couldn't finish him. Can he punch well enough to go up five pounds in weight? He's got the power, no doubt about it. If power is going to do it, he's standing flat foot enough to punch. And he could knock out a bigger guy if this guy had not been moving so much, he would have had a knockout tonight. He's moving on toward 28 years old, toward what would have to be the prime and maybe beyond that just a little bit the latter stages of his boxing career. Could he learn to be a flat-footed knockout puncher as that speed and maneuverability that made him so great goes away? <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, the great Sugar Ray Robinson, of course, even great Sugar Ray Leonard, these guys moved up with power. They stood a little closer to the ground. They had a little more confidence in that punch. He can become a middleweight, even a middleweight champion if he gets a little older, maybe 35. You know, in June, we had a good time in Palm Springs, California, and what a scene this was tonight, huh? This we don't always have to be in Vegas or Atlantic City for I'm boxing. telling you, this is the best fight of all. You, th you loved it, huh? Uh, I enjoyed that one. Great. We had a great time, too. Larry Merchant, your closing comments on Michael Moore's victory, Pernell Whitaker's victory, and a tremendously exciting evening of boxing here in Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, I, have two, I have two thoughts. Uh, one is, is that boxers like Pernell Whitaker seldom inspire a national kind of following, unless they're brilliant uh, boxers and personalities like a Muhammad Ali and a Ray Leonard. What they can inspire is an ethnic following or a regional following. And we saw here that Pernell Whitaker did an excellent job, and I think part of it had to do with the fact that he was right here in his hometown and inspired by this crowd and wanting to do his best because he could have had his hands fuller than they were if, if he wasn't ready to do battle. The second thing about Michael Moore, there's, there's the oddest story about Michael Moore. He has one of the most unusual rituals I've ever heard of. He lives in a lovely home, but when he goes into training for a fight, he goes into Manuel Stewart's home, goes down in the cellar, into a small seven by nine foot cubicle with a bed and a small television, and stays there until they're ready to go to the fight. Weeks, months, no matter how long it is. When he comes out, he's got his game face on, and we saw a fighter tonight who's vaulted into the top of the young heavyweight group and a force to be reckoned with and a crowd-pleasing fighter. Well, you said before the fight that you rated him fifth among the young heavyweights behind Bo and Lennox Lewis and Mercer and Morrison. Where does he rank after having knocked out Alex Stewart in the fourth round? Well, I'd have to say that I'd move him up right behind Bo. I think Bo has fought a better class of uh, opposition so far, but he's right up there. He's ready to take over. Uh, he'll be a force in another year or so uh, to fight for the title. All right. Well, the hard punching was the lucky rabbit's foot tonight for Michael Moore. Maybe the home crowd was the lucky rabbit foot for Pernell Whitaker. We've only had George Foreman with us for a few months now, and we're seeing nothing but excitement in the ring. It looks like George has brought us a good, little good luck, too. In the first fight you saw tonight, Michael Moore scored a fourth round technical knockout of Alex Stewart at a minute and 57 of the fourth. The fight stopped because of two large and prolific cuts over the eyes of Alex Stewart. You saw terrific punching with both hands from both of the fighters in that bout. It was excitement all the way. And then, before one of the wildest crowds we've ever seen at a boxing match, Pernell Whitaker, escorted into the ring by a 110-piece marching band, had difficulty in the early rounds against the extremely awkward Poli Diaz, and then came back 
to pound out a one-sided, unanimous decision with some of the hardest punching we've ever seen from the undisputed lightweight champ. Stay tuned immediately following this edition of World Championship Boxing Coverage for HBO Comedy Hour. Whoopi Goldberg and Billy Connolly on the East Coast and Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade on the West Coast. And be sure to join us Saturday, August 17, for our next telecast of World Championship Boxing. WBC Super Welterweight Champion Terry Norris defends his title against Brett Lally. 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern, 7 o'clock Pacific, August 17, here on HBO. We expect another great one. So now, for Larry Merchant and George Foreman and Harold Letterman, I'm Jim Lampley saying so long tonight from Norfolk, Virginia. The executive producer of HBO Sports is Ross Greenberg. Tonight's telecast produced by Michael J. Whalen, directed by Mark Pate. The replay producers were David Harmon and Brian McDonald. Associate producer Kirby Bradley. Feature producer Stephen Salvatore. Assistance to the producer Jerry Aniskevich, David Leibson, and Artie Curry. And the production manager was Russell Gabay. presentation of HBO Sports, the network of champions.